What's going on? Happy Friday. It's Kevin Kenny, and welcome to the Build Series live in New York City. And we thought, what better way to celebrate our guest today's new album, Kin, being out and available for you to enjoy right now than having him on the show to discuss it. Give it up for Electric Guest. One of the tracks off that album, brand new music video just dropped today. is called More. We're going to give it to you right here. Check it out. And off they went to build. Electric Guest, everybody. hey -o. Thanks, y'all. I know it's early. The record just came out, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say right now, that's my new favorite song off the record. There is a cool, like, doo-wop, just, like, good vibe. I mean, the, there's good vibes throughout the record, but that, that song right there. Hell yeah. Thank that's, you. That rules. That's Can like our first time seeing the video, really, too. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a trip, yeah. Uh, what goes into the video? Because that's far more than just like a little performance. I mean, that's almost like a little mini movie you gave us there. Yeah, it took a while. The, the director wanted to do it in like one fluid shot, and I was like, I'm not Beyonce. It's not going to be that good. <laughs> but we kind of stitched it. We have like five points where we stitched the edit. So, but we did do kind of long takes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dollars another video I'll talk to you about in a little bit, but that's like, you guys have fun with the videos. Visuals are something that strikes me as very important to you guys as artists. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We try to use like all our own friend, like those, the four people that kind of like, you know, bring me into the video and then I leave with them. They're all just those like are our real friends. friends. Yeah. All of our videos is kind of just yeah. like all our own nice. people. Yeah. No, you should put a, no fake friends were used. In the no fake friends. Video. Yeah. Cause I've seen people on the internet be like, he bought those people. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, same same kind of vibe though with Dollar because in Dollar, um, that's a video where you're kind of having a party and it's and it's really fun and those are all real people. It's even some family members I think are in that video. Yeah, 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 it's totally. cool. We went like I'm from the Bay Area, and my me and my brother were like, oh, we should do like a, a kind of like San Francisco thing, go back home and just try to use every favor that we we could, and so we got like the DeLorean hovercraft and all these crazy things that was like just a friend made that over the course of five years and just kind of let us use it as a favor. And all the, all the kids in it are like kids I grew up with. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It was like fun. a homecoming of sorts. My mom's in it. Um, you're a Bay area. And then Matthew, where are you from? Virginia. Okay. how do you guys meet? Uh, we met in LA, um, <clears throat> pretty soon after moving there, I was going over to, uh, the house that Asa was living in. Uh, it's kind of like a communal artist house with all these, people coming in and out. What are those like? Is I imagine like the real world. What are yeah, those? <laughs> a lot less drama, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a great reality show though, you know, just all these artists, he's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was going over to play drums on, uh, at a studio in the basement of this house. Okay. Uh, and then met Asa and he was kind of first starting to write electric guest stuff and asked me to play on some of it. And I was new to the city and I would drive from West Hollywood to Mount Washington, like all the time just to do it. And it kind of like, Started there. Evolved from there. Do you have yeah. to be friends with someone before you can collaborate with them artistically? I mean, I know, you know, the way the industry works and the business works, it's not always the case, but optimally, do you prefer that? I think, yeah, if you're going to continue to create something with them. Yeah, yeah for long-term. It long helps, for stuff. sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys, just personally, uh, as creatives, have you ever had creative rapport with somebody, but maybe not personal rapport? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. What is that like? Where you can't really hold, like, it's a It's weird. Talk, I remember, without naming any names, but I had, like... Uh, this uh, lady that I was like, I really, we just vibed in the studio and it was like years. And then like we tried to hang out, like, let's go get some coffee. And I was like, nope. Really? This is super awkward. Yeah, it's something it's about, like it gives you something to do anytime you have an activity to do together. Okay. But then like socializing is just a different beast, I think. Yeah. I just find even talking to artists sometimes you'd think, oh my God, you're so charismatic in the music video. You're so great on the record. And then they're, they're not, oh, not dull, yeah, yeah, but yeah. a bit introspective and, you know, Case in right, point, introverted right? maybe I should yeah. say. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I, I'm excited to talk to you guys today for a number of reasons, but one of them is that uh, just from reading interviews you guys did, there's a great uh, review in Billboard right now, and also AP did a great review of you guys that really, if you want to come as close as possible to this record while listening to it and understanding where you guys are coming from, I encourage you to check those out. And um, you give a lot of thought. You're a very thoughtful artist, which I appreciate. And at the same time, though, it's interesting because I know you guys are also against over-intellectualizing music, which a lot of people you know, can do. It's easy to do. How do you balance that, though? Are there, are there aspects of the creative process that you, you think deserve a lot of thought? Are there aspects that you shouldn't? You should just go with vibe? How does that break down? I mean, I only said that the over-intellectualizing thing, which I definitely is, was the th kind of like thesis statement for this particular album because I've spent the majority of my life over-intellectualizing like everything and just being like, oh my God, if, if I spend another, you know, 45 minutes on this particular sound, it's going to change the song. And I think writing with other people, because we've written a lot with other artists, kind of led me to see myself. You can kind of get in the room with people and like, oh, that's what I do. I just spin my wheels for hours and it doesn't fundamentally change this song. So with this album, we were just like, Let's try to go back to like 
the kind of days when we were in our pajamas, just messing around in your room, and you're just having fun in this kind of different way that's a little lighter. Yeah. Do you think that you should spend more time thinking about lyrics when you're putting together a song or, or the actual instrumentation? I mean, both, kind of. Yeah, it's probably both. I mean, I think one good thing about his lyrics is that you can kind of insert your own perspective on it, and, okay. and even if it's not what he's genuinely singing about, you can kind of make your own story there, and, and it kind of still works. The song will still work, so. How, I'm fascinated by this thing you just said, Asa, and I'm wondering if you feel the same way, Matt, um, about finding yourself through working with others, because I would imagine that at, at the very least there's a danger of losing yourself working with so many people because you're constantly writing for another person's disposition, not your own, but you feel differently. How does that factor in? Well, no, you're probably right. I mean, if, I think if you spend, you know, the majority of your career, like, shadowing somebody, I could see that getting blurry in terms of etching out your own way. But it would just be like, you know, if you took the next month to just shadow some host or something. And right. then you can just see little nuances of like, oh, I like that, I don't like that. It's a good, it's really hard to see ourselves objectively at all in life. Mm. And it's so rare that you kind of get to hold the mirror up to yourself. And so I think working with other people is just poignant in that way. You can just well, really, it's that. clear. For sure. You feel the same way, Matt? Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. I mean, you figure out what works for yourself and you know, you kind of will tweak things for other people, and it's a collaborative effort, so. When do you, and it may be different for both of you, so please feel free to jump in, is it, when did you feel like you met yourself or got to know your true self as a musician? You, know, you talk about like, getting to know yourself better through collaborating with others. Have you, have you arrived? Maybe it's kin, you know? Maybe it's I, not kin. Maybe you're still trying to find yourself. I mean, definitely. You know, yeah. that's a li it's definitely a life thing. I'll probably be doing that till I yeah. pass away. But, but, yeah, I think, like, the goal for us is to kind of like hone in. It's funny. It's kind of like life. Hopefully the goal of any good life is to become more yourself or become more authentic and hone in on who you are. And I think that like this is our third album and we finally feel like, oh, this this feels like us. It is more pop, yeah. but I love corny, saccharine pop. I yeah. do. And so it's like it has more of, of that kind of like... It's not hiding in the same way. Yeah. You know? Well, to that point about identity, you know, the music media kind of does this obnoxious thing you know if we're going to be honest where if you guys come they love trends they love scenes the ideas of these things right and grouping things together sort of simplifies their writing at times and if you have like one thing in common out of 10 things with another group of people you're immediately that thing right and that kind of happened to you guys you know your 2010s with sort of this indie label right totally but that's not truly who you guys are today so talk just to about that evolution totally we just kind of came up in a scene right in like two yeah <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. It's been a. I feel like where we are now is definitely where we should be, and we feel most comfortable. I think too, like just along the way, you know, when you put out a record, you go on tour with it. You see an immediate reaction from fans, and from there, you kind of like realize what works and what doesn't work, and what you kind of want to expand upon, and all that stuff. So it's just always changing. Yeah, totally. The. Um I think you said you might have said corny, corny, or use some funny words. Yeah, now. corny is a terrible right. word. Well, no, but you know what's interesting is that I've heard the term This album is unapologetically pop, and I thought that's interesting of why we feel we need to apologize for just pure pop music. I know, you you I know. never hear unapologetically hip hop. You never hear unapologetically yeah. rock. But you hear that a lot with pop. Why do you think that is? Why can't we just give in to the joy of pop? I think it's just because pop can have uh, like a bad connotation in some. It can be like, oh, it's. It's like empty, you know. It's like yeah. just like I want to live forever, and like who can relate to that, you know? But <laughs> but because uh, uh, we're all gonna die. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I think especially for us, because we did come from a more indie scene. That's probably why we have that insecurity, like oh, we are pop, sorry, you know. Like, but but it, but I think like we stand by, it. like we love it, and all of our stuff has been pop, straight up. Like all three albums were yeah. were pop in in some form. I just think. Like I said, this is hiding a little less. You know, the vocals are just like, wow, right out there. One of my favorite things I've read about the album, uh, and I, I would like to suggest it for a merch item on the next tour, is more Wham than Weezer. That is a great <laughs> line. That, quote, yeah. that is such a great line, <laughs> yeah. man. And, uh, but talked about what that means when thinking about the sonic influences of this album. Well, we didn't write that line, more Wham than Weezer. Do you agree Weezer, with that? Yes, I we think do. it's great. We love Wham. George and Michael. Definitely. We've even covered Wham before. Yeah, we have. It was just like our stuff is like more R&B. You yeah. know, it's kind of like 
early 2000s. Neptune, JP, Maya was an influence, I know. Yeah, totally, totally. That's awesome. Uh, talking back, you know, 20 year, almost 20 years ago now, I know you uh, you said, and I think it was in the Billboard piece, about just like how great like the Britneys and the InSyncs and the Christinas were and just how you'd like to somehow try to find a way back to maybe the simplicity of that time in pop music. What, what, what made that time so great, in your opinion? It was just fun. Like, so much fun. Like, yeah. No ego involved with it, really. Just, uh, and I just think we kind of need that right now. You know, we need to all kind of have a little bit of fun in this dark world that we live in right now. Yeah, things have gotten pretty complex yeah. in the United States. I know, I think, again, it was AP or Bill where you were saying that you feel like we're a little off the mark culturally right now. Yeah, I mean, it's just a it's just a time of deep transition, I think, for for all of us, and I think everybody's feeling it. Everybody's kind of feeling the weight of of the cultural moment that we find ourselves in, and so we wanted to make an album that that was pop, but that wasn't void of sentiment. That was still saying something, mm. you know. And so, which turns out to be hard to do. It's like the minute you do a dance record, it's like no one's trying to hear you wax on about your deepest fears or anything but but i think it was trying to find that balance of making a, a super fun record that was also saying something yeah i almost think of it as a kid you remember medicine which just tastes terrible but then there was like that one medicine that was like cotton candy flavored and that's like meaningful <laughs> pop is always like that to me where it tastes good and you're like oh i'm getting better listening to this too you know <laughs> and it's so instant too like the more video we showed you at the top of the show it's just like you know even in a, in, a, in a micro scale of today and just the heaviness of today and running around this crazy city of New York City, immediately, like, my, you know, my spirits were lifted by that. It's oh, just right so on. quick and it's nice. cool and it's just, you know, it's a nice escape. My, my pop is a theater director and, um, like, eight months ago when we were in the thick of the album, he was like, oh, come, come into my theater, like, watch the opening line of this play that's playing. And we were sitting there in the dark and this character goes like, will there be singing in dark times? And somebody's like, yes, there will be singing in dark times. And he was like, I thought that would resonate with you with this album. And that's kind of how we feel about it. It's like, I think as a country, it's, it is a really difficult time, but I, I just think there's still, there's still room for, for joy if, if we can make it. Do you think pop has gotten too pretentious at times? Like we talk about the evolution, right? From like sort of there's that happy, no ego, Matt, you were saying before from, you know, 20 years ago, like how do you feel about the evolution of that sound? I mean, I don't want to hate on pop. I mean, yeah. I, like I, I, I love it. I love modern music. I, I like, I ingest so much of it. But um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important to say something personally. Mm. I, I think like, if you're not saying something, it's like it is a platform, and and you should use it to as much as you can honor your true self. And I think we all have these vulnerable internal selves that go on whether we acknowledge them or not. And yeah, I think there's always a good majority of us that are just faking it. You know what I mean? I think it's better if you can just to try to show up and be vulnerable. Not that yeah. like, and look at us, we're nailing it. But right. but no. I do think it's like, you know. It's yeah, songs with substance stay around, you know, and you okay. want to revisit them and you can go, it's like a well, you can go back to and get something from. And you and can internalize it. Yeah, right? uh, yeah, and put it on your own. Yeah, exactly. Right, Compared I had a good time at that party, but it's not going to stay with me as opposed to something like a, like a really deep chat with a friend, you know? Yeah. Totally. Um, with this uh, album, you got Dollar on it as well, and that's a song that I know you said has, has checked off a ton of boxes for you. What do you mean by that? Did you say that? Uh, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, it's it like an interrogation. Right? Like, you said on uh, July 1st. <laughs> uh, but it, I guess it, it has checked off a lot of boxes. No, it has. Me. I mean, I think um, for, I know for me, just the video, because the video was so like, it was this homecoming. We went back to the Bay Area. Brother like, directed it. Brother directed it, yeah. And. Yeah, it was just like a, like it was a, just a family affair. It was like every the it was just such a good vibe. Everything was free because everyone was like, "Sure, you can use my club that I'm starting," or like, "Oh, like I, I property manage this place in San Francisco." And we actually shot a whole thing at like this weed factory. Like my friend of mine was growing weed, and then like we looked back, and it was a little too like cool guys. Or like, right. look at this marijuana, and so we just <laughs> we cut it, but yeah. just so it had more of like a lighter vibe, but. But yeah, it was just it was super fun for us. That is cool. I want to run through um, some collaboration stories, and you know, you can make these short or long, whatever you want to do. But with uh, Portugal the Man, feel it still. How'd that come about? What was your role in that song? Um, uh, we were working with this producer named John Hill, and we did two songs with him on our last album. And then a couple months later, he hit me up like, oh, would you, will you come like finish this bridge? Just put some harmonies on this bridge for this band, Portugal the Man. And so I came over. I didn't know them at all. I was kind of nervous. And 
we banged out the bridge in like half an hour. And then after a couple hours, I got my nerve up and I was like, I have my laptop. Do you guys want to start another song in the next room? And so we just kind of started with that hi hat, you know, and then boom, 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 boom. He put that down really early on. And then, yeah, we just, after two hours, the song was kind of like done. And lyrically, did you contribute anything to the to the, or was that all? I mean, I sung a little. I mean, a little like, I'm singing on the bridge, but no, it was John. John's a great lyricist. Yeah, kinda, he nailed that. Yeah, it's a cool vibe. And then you guys were like, the only feature on Carly Rae's album, right? Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, that was cool. How'd that come about? Um, Asa got asked to write, and um, the day before, I think we kind of. I, I at my house, I kind of pounded out the piano part and bass and and drums, and then sent it to him. Like, what do you think about this? And he was like, Oh, this is cool, and played it for her. And then they just went at it and like started writing. We just got it at my house. Is Carly someone that we were talking about rapport before? Do you have rapport both personally and musically with Carly? Yeah, she's amazing. She's such a sweetheart. She's exactly she who you know. They say like, never meet your idols. Like this. Yeah. She's like. The best human. She's great. She's, like, awesome. yeah, yeah. she's has super happy. She's sweet. And yeah. how rare is that? It's kind of the dream career, right? Where you open with a big, inescapable pop hit, and then you have all this critical acclaim and praise. Now, totally, I never know. Happens. Her career is yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really awesome. cool. Um, well, awesome guys. We're gonna turn it over to the fans right now, and uh, the first is gonna come from over here. Hi guys. Hi. Um, as a creative person who also struggles with getting out of my own head, how what methods do you use to approach the creative process from a more organic way? I guess. You know, I I remember there's a an interview with Outkast um, right before they put out the Love Below speaker box where they had like Hey Ya on it, which is like the biggest song ever. And Andre 3000 was just essentially saying like, he was like, oh, I had no idea if like that, that was the worst thing I'd ever made. We like, I sent it to a bunch of magazines. No one really got it because we were supposed to be this hip hop thing. And I, I made this left turn and he was like, and I was going to scrap the album like seven days before release. I told the record label, no go. And that song was like, probably the biggest song since like smells like teen spirit you know nirvana is like as a global song so it was just a reminder to me like it's so hard to ever know what your thing is and just like you know i think it's it, the art of getting out of your head is a lifelong thing i do not know the answer to it but i think it's just a daily thing the same way we do with ourselves like of how to show up in the world and not be fearful and kind of like and trust your instincts you know little things like that Hey, yeah, is also just a great, I mean, this is what you're saying, Asa, but, like, I'm, I'm remembering as a kid, I didn't think for one second that this was random, coming off, like, so fresh, so clean. I was just, like, or Miss Jackson. I was just, like, this is a great song. I don't care who sings it. Totally. Maybe I even totally. know Andre totally. singing it, but it was just, like, this is great. I love this. So, totally. Yeah. yeah. Also, I will say, to actually try to answer the question, <laughs> keeping, like, a certain amount of trusted people around you, finding those two, three people that you actually think will give it to you straight, but also be gentle i think that that helps because you tell one random bumpkin something like well, let me show you this song and they're like no no and that could be it because we're all so fearful of everything yeah i heard uh someone say i think zane low said this recently and i don't know if this is liberating for you guys as artists but how like there aren't any misses anymore in streaming like we're a very forgiving uh public now as opposed to before you know what i mean because so much effort would go into a single 15 years ago and if it failed it failed huge right but nowadays it's like you know you try something as a creative and if it doesn't work there's always a new music friday totally. you know yeah a lot of music yeah it's kind of cool uh let's get to one final fan question i'll come from right behind me hi hey. um i just wanted to ask what's an album or a song particularly that like has informed you guys creatively for this album good question I mean, I just in general, I was kind of listening to like a lot of early 2000s pop. Yeah. A lot of stuff like produced by the Neptunes, that early Justin Timberlake album, early Usher, things like that. I like there wasn't one seminal album that that changed it. But but yeah, yeah we listened to a lot of that era stuff. Justified record is awesome, dude. It's, it's still amazing. great. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. They were on such a run, him and Chad, man. It's awesome. Uh, here's a question I'll end on, because I think this is kind of cool. If you were to listen to, like, if you were to recommend us listen to one song or one album before listening to Ken, right? Like, like kind of setting the mood, getting our ears ready to consume this, what would it be? What do you think is, like, a great appetizer for this? Maybe Dear to Me. Oh, you mean of, of our songs album. or someone? Oh no, just say anybody. Like I throw like like if you, if oh. I want to get in the right headspace to consume this way, you think we should consume this? What's like a great you know record album s song just to kind of set the mood? You got to answer that. That's too hard. <laughs> That's I mean, a huge honestly, question. Justified is a good one, but I mean, 
because it's an all around record and it does focus on party and feeling good and and it's got serious songs too but um I don't know. That's a tough one for us. I mean, from our last records, I think "Dear to Me" is a great song because, and especially if you look at the video, because it is very family oriented and like a love song, and there's a lot of genuine uh, feeling that you there's like a genuine feeling you get from the video, that, and I think that that is really us essentially. So yeah, awesome. Right on, guys. We're unfortunately out of time, but this was like the total pleasure. Thank fun. you for having. Do you have me. any Thank shows you. coming up we can plug, or is it just basically we just played two shows last night? But we do have a New York February, show. yeah, Webster okay. Hall. Oh, Webster mm-hmm. Hall, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Good All right, cool guys. Electric guest. The album is kin. It's available now. Go stream that. One more time for our guest today, guys. Thank you.